hand. Everybody hold up your hand. Okay. It says hands. Y'all, thank y'all. Okay. I just wanted to wave at you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It, it, isn't the hand amazing? Isn't the hand, you know, the hand is something that you don't even think about how you use it. How many reaches out for a cup and your hand automatically conforms to that shape before you grab it? Isn't that amazing? You just reach out. What about re you reach, I'm going to reach for this controller right here, this little clicker, and did you know I didn't tell my hand what to do? It just did it. Isn't that amazing? Luke 9, 62, no man having put his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom. Okay? Your old, your old hand, it needs to be dedicated, right? And, and that's what uh, Pastor, our Brother Thomas was talking about a while ago when he was talking about going to the uttermost parts of the earth. You know what he's doing? He's plowing. That seed can be sown into the hearts and lives of those people and that the Lord can raise up a crop. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. His hand is to the plow and ours should be as well. Let's open with prayer. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this time together. Lord, we thank you for the hands that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for the hands that hung, that were nailed to the cross. Lord, thank you for the hands, what they've done and what they can do, Lord. Lord, open your word to us, precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> the laying on of hands is a Christian principle or element of our relationship with the Lord, the laying on of hands. Now, I had y'all wave at me. I had y'all wave at me because I missed y'all. <laughs> it's so good to be back among the family. Amen. I, we love you guys. I'm so thankful, so very thankful for our church family Y'all brought us food while we were in the house, and I'm so thankful. Y'all loved us. Real, I, we, were, we felt guilty for taking the food. <laughs> I mean, because there was like five of us and three teenage boys, so guess what? Whenever y'all bring us food, it's a lot of food because a lot of y'all know how much the boys eat. I don't eat a lot. <laughs> so it's a whole lot. And, and you just brought in, and we were so grateful because uh, we were sick. And uh, I was actually probably the worst of the family. I was down for a while. We had COVID. Now, uh, the, the China virus, the coronavirus, whatever you call it, it made its way into our house. And that was after we had been doing transports for, for you know, patients for a long time. And, uh, and, and so I, I wondered, I, I sort of questioned, you know, my faith was a little bit shaken because I knew the Lord had kept me. I'd be, I was in the vehicle without, for hours with some of these patients. You know, you're sort of breathing the same air, right? <laughs> uh, after a while, it doesn't matter if you have on a good mask or not. After a while, well, well, <laughs> and, and, and many times, but, and then, then we get the coronavirus. And, and what happened was Joshua, our youngest, we think he got it at school. He brought it home. We had the cold spell. We had, we had a fireplace, so we had some heat, but we sort of all huddled together and you know what we shared? The coronavirus. <laughs> and, and so uh, God, I, I sort of got sick. I, you know, it was, it was difficult. But, but I'm so thankful for that time. You know why I'm thankful for that time? Because I needed a reset. I, I needed a reset. There, there is uh, something about, I, I am right now in a state of personal revival like I haven't had in a long time, guys. Because I connected with the Lord. You know, sometimes you need to go through some adversity that you don't want to go through. And sometimes that shakes your faith because the Lord is most concerned about what's going on on the inside of you. And we get distracted with things all around us. And you may be doing some really nice things for the Lord. But if you're not taking care of your soul on the inside, whoa, whoa. Guys, it's of utmost importance that you take care of your soul. Like Pastor talked about when Horatio Spafford said, it is well with my soul. He had not neglected in the midst of sorrow and crisis, the state of his soul. In the midst of adversity, he did not neglect his soul. I had been neglecting my soul 
because I was busy. And you know what happened? I'm praying. I'm wondering, Lord, why did I get this? Why is it taking me so long to get well? And, and why is it, you know, why are we all going through this? And, and I, I didn't have an answer. I didn't get an answer from the Lord. I felt like it, except that I just run after the Lord. I just go out. So I told my family, I said, I'm going through the Bible. I know that you can read all the way through the Bible in about three months if you'll do like 12 chapters a day. And so I am just going to just, I'm going to just pour myself into the Word of God. And did you know that that is what took me into the personal revival? I was sharing before service uh, with Linda that, uh, that, that I, it's different now. I'm not like going off and doing something and going back and checking in with the Lord. You know, that, that's what I did a lot, right? I'd go off and do something to try to do something for the kingdom of God. Then I'd go back and I would check in with the Lord. And it's different when you're in personal revival because you're with the Lord walking along. He's walking along the way with you. And, and it's so personal and intimate. And man, it's a different way to live your life. I needed that. We needed that in our home. And the Lord did something amazing in our home with our kids. My, I mean, the, the, mo, the best time we've ever had as a family. And I'm talking about precious Holy Spirit moving upon the hearts. I mean, tears. It's just repentance. Things that need to happen. And it happened. It wouldn't have happened had it not been for the coronavirus. So I'm thankful. I'm very, very thankful. Thank you, Lord, for the coronavirus. We need that. Now, what does that have to do with the laying on of hands or hands? Do you know every time, if I, if I shake Coy's hand here, you, you know what I'm doing? A lot of things. Physiologically, I just gave him some of my DNA. Did y'all know that? I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> You know, I just made a deposit on him. You can't help it. You shed, you shed millions of skin cells every day. Back when I worked in the, the clean room and we were doing the semiconductor manufacturing, did you know the, one of the biggest carabouts that they train you on up front is how your skin is always flaking off. Yeah, it's being refreshed. And your skin cells, it's, it's just the way that it works. Why? The Lord keeps us renewed. Right? Just like I'm telling you, you need to do for your soul. He's made it into your body. Your body is it's always being renewed. Doesn't your cells regenerate, right? So whenever you take your hand and you do something with your hand, did you know you're leaving some of your identity there? Hand. Did you know that the laying on of hands is a Christian principle? The laying on of hands. Did you know that whenever the ironic blessing is performed, did you know that the hands are... How do you do your hands, brother? Whenever you... Look at that. And, and you always do the blessing with, your hand, with his hands, with extended out. It, the hands are so important. They're, your hands are so important. In Scripture, there would be a sin sacrifice that would be presented to the Lord. And you know what they would do with their hands? The priest would take their hands and they'd put it on that sacrifice and they would impute the sin of the nation upon that animal the hands the hands Jacob y'all remember the story of Jacob blessing Ephraim and Manasseh and he does that's right Mary he does his hands like this but he puts his hands on them and and over thousands of times in scripture is the word hand hands touched uh, it's over and over and over again what about Jesus blessing the children? Did he use his hands? Amen. The apostles, they laid their hands on people. They, whenever people would get healed, I'll show you some scriptures in a little bit. People get healed. The impartation of miraculous gifts, right? Supernatural gifts. Uh, whenever people would uh, be commissioned to walk in some ordination or something, the hands, uh, always the hands. Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection or a great maturing in our faith, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of res resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. So in these things that are very profound that we study about... We among those are listed the laying on of hands. Now I want to tell you in just a moment why I wanted to do this message today because part of my 
revival had to do with the laying on of hands. 1 Timothy 5.22, lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partakers of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Paul is telling Timothy here to don't put your hands on somebody to impart a spiritual gift or to call them into ministry. Don't do it suddenly. Why? Because th- we need to consider. We need to, before he would lay his hands on somebody to call them into ministry, he said, don't do it suddenly. I was approached by some guys. They had come up to houses for healing. We did it to We had a talk. We had a great fellowship. I didn't know them all that well, but man, these guys are warriors for the kingdom of God, passionate for Jesus. They've let, abandoned everything and they are pursuing the Lord. And one guy came up and talked to me about he, the, he felt like the Lord had given him a gift of healing, a gift of healing. And coupled to that was a gift of discernment. And I asked a question because I was familiar with these verses. I asked him, when did you have someone lay their hands on you? You see, when you come to the front here during our altar call, what Pastor Bruce, is he's, he's got us lined up where when you come up, what do we do? We, we lay our hands on you, Right. There's something very significant in how you lay your hands on somebody. When you lay your hands on somebody, something is happening there. They asked me to lay my hands on them for a commissioning. And I felt so unworthy, like out of everybody here in Abilene, why are you asking me? I'm not the guy that should be doing it. So this, the, this verse right here, I thought of this verse immediately, don't do it suddenly. And so it took a few weeks. And during that time is whenever we got sick. During that time, after I'd already said, okay, well, we'll do it. But I had to go through that time of sickness in order to, for myself to be able to put my hands on them and to pray and have something so real on the inside of me that whenever I laid my hands on them, that I'm commissioning some warriors for the kingdom of God. There was a commissioning that was going on in their lives, and those guys are doing it. They are putting their hand to the plow. Now their hand is going on to something, and it's physical, and it's spiritual, and and they are busy because seed need to be sown. We need to be about our Father's business. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading. Okay? So I'm I'm doing reading. Did y'all know he was told to read? Timothy was told to read. Read to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the elders or the presbytery. Timothy was commissioned by the laying on of hands. What's happening with that? There's much more to it than just a touch. Like, that's not, it's not just contact. There's more to it. Your hands, they say something about you. Whenever you've gone somewhere and you've touched something, you've done, if you do it for good, can you not also do it for bad? Your hands. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Pay attention to this thing about the laying on of hands. Continue in them, for in in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear. hear. Now, Now, it was by prophecy. We talk about prophecy, but coupled to that prophecy of which through which Timothy got the gift, there was an involvement of laying on of hands. There's something about this person-to-person contact, something about this in the spiritual sense, this this laying on of hands that enables this gifting, this commission, this ordination in Timothy. That and, And guess what? There's many believers in the world today because Timothy operated in what he had received. What he had received. How many, like me, are very, I mean, it's comforting for somebody to come up and if I'm struggling with something, they come up and they just sort of put their hand on my shoulder. Isn't that nice? If you're up here praying, isn't it nice to have somebody come up and and touch you from behind? Isn't that nice? Doesn't that bring, and it makes you feel encouraged a little bit, like you're not just up there by yourself and maybe everybody's watching. That's why I encourage you guys, if you see someone up here at the front, don't just watch Get involved. Help them. Encourage them. Because we're all in this thing together. 
And, and by your hands, by the application of your hands, you can help a fellow believer to overcome something, to be encouraged in something, to be exhorted to overcome something. We need to be involved. Too often is the church sitting back watching what's to see if somebody else is going to do it. And then when if, they, if it doesn't happen from maybe your lack of involvement, then all of a sudden we have a critical tongue that nobody did it or they didn't do it right and, and we are missing the mark. Why? Because we're not used to using our hands. We don't want to apply our hands. Did you know touching? That's what we do with our hands, right? Of everything of your body, the thing that you touch the most with, it's your hands, right? Did you know that God gave us that picture from the beginning? Whenever the Bible says that he formed Adam, did you know his hand was involved? He formed Adam. That means he squeezed the dirt and he made a man. He got his hands dirty, literally. He did. Why? Because there's some good that can come out of you getting your hand dirty. If you're not willing to get your hand dirty, you're not willing to put your hand to the plow, you're not willing to be involved, you're going to sit back and be a spectator. You cannot be a true follower of the Lord and not yoke up and put your hand to the plow. You cannot be a true follower of because he did it. And if you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to do what he did. They didn't sit in the classroom every day, amen? Whenever they were, they didn't sit in the classroom. Whenever he got out there and he was ministering, he took them and showed them how to do it, and they got their hands dirty. Jesus touched people. How many would like to be physically touched by Jesus? <laughs> we would like to be physically touched, and I'm not talking, I'm talking about where some of his DNA got on you. I'm talking about a physical touch. Okay, that would be so awesome. And, and did you know the Lord let it, lets us have something else Whenever we, we use our hand for, did you know that I'm impressing upon him my fingerprints? The fingerprints of Almighty God upon man. He pressed it. Have you ever taken clay, Play-Doh, and put your finger in it and then pulled it back and looked real close at it and you'd see the fingerprint? Isn't that amazing? Do you think the Lord wants you to put your fingerprint upon somebody, upon a need, upon something somebody's going through? Isn't it amazing that you can have a fingerprint left upon a situation, upon a hurt? You can leave your fingerprint there. Guys, I'm trying to encourage you to do more with your life, to do more, to do more. Live in revival where everything that you do is unto the Lord Jesus Christ for the glory of God, for the building of his kingdom. Don't set back. We are in a dangerous, dangerous time in this, in this world, and we must be about our Father's business. But you won't do it successfully. You won't accomplish anything if you're not willing to lend your hand, to yield your will, and to present yourself unto the service of our Lord. You won't be able to accomplish anything. Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. When he was come down from the mountain, this is after the Sermon on the Mount, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Jesus had just given the Sermon on the Mount. What does he do immediately after that? He lends his hand. <laughs> the need came along and he lends his hand and he touches, he touches and the disease is cleared up. Isn't it amazing? John Wesley said that, that man is sick unto death. We all have the same disease. It's called sin. And that picture of the man being eaten up and Jesus touches him. He puts his hand. Guys, great healing can happen if you'll apply your hand. Great things can be accomplished if you'll lend your hand. Matthew 8, again, now verses 14 and 15. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and, of, and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand. And the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. 
So coming down the mountain and going to the house, I've been to Israel, and I'm telling you, they're not very far apart <laughs> where the Sermon on the Mount happened and where Peter lived in Capernaum. He goes, it's not very far at all, and Jesus is touching. Isn't it something how if you, if you live your life, you, you'll do something today, and, and, and at the, maybe it's at the gas station, and you leave there, and man, it's not, and then there's another opportunity. You know how many opportunities there are for you to lend your hand? Way more than you really, <laughs> than you really might be able to. But, but you, you oftentimes won't do it because of fear. Did you know I was along the journey of transporting COVID patients? I was afraid of getting sick. I had the fear. I mean, I wanted to act like I didn't, but, and I did some, you know, long way, have faith. Okay, I know the Lord's going to keep me. And, you know, I'm, I'm driving to McCamey <laughs> or I'm driving to, you know, Amarillo, or I'm driving, it's so long, but the Lord's going to keep me. I know the Lord's going to keep me. And, uh, but then all of a sudden I'd had this little fear come on me. And do you know that the fear that would come on me would prevent me from doing what I needed to do? Because I didn't want to become like that, which was what I was ministering to. I didn't want to get COVID. Oftentimes we'll be afraid to share of our finances. You know why? Because we don't want to be full poor. People won't get, you don't want to become that which you're ministering to. So you hold back. So I'm challenging you. Overcome that. Look it in the face and say, Jesus is going to touch somebody. Amen. He's going to, and I'm going to put my finger mark on there. They're going to leave some of my DNA to show that the Lord worked through me and touched somebody's life. Amen? Isn't that a good way to live your life? Matthew 9. There's so many examples to share with you guys. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the, minist and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise... He said to them, give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. This is right after the woman had touched the hem of his garment. He's on his way to the ruler's house, and there's this, this little lady that's dead. And, and he said, she's, she's asleep. She's, she's just asleep. She's, and, and what does Jesus do? When the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand. And the maid arose, and Jesus left upon a dead person his mark. He left his DNA. He touched, he impressed upon her his fingerprints and life, life. When Jesus departed, Matthew 9 again. When Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And he touched their eyes. You see, a touch can do so much. Open eyes, set free, heal, deliver. These are big things that the Lord wants us to do with our hands. And people could touch Jesus. The lady with the issue of blood, she touched something about our hands. Touch is important. What you touch says something about you. It says something about you. How would you like to go through life and on the other end of your life, everything that bears your DNA is a bottle of beer? Okay? The things that you touched, maybe it was that money that you held on and you squeezed to so hard hard what if there's things it, you, what you grab a hold of what you hold on to it says a lot about you it says a lot about you there is a a great picture of touch what about if you are a husband and you your, your wife is struggling with something and you go up and you touch her and you encourage her. What about a child that's fearful and you go up and you touch the child and you hug the child? What about if you are uh, with a friend who's crying and you reach out and you hug them and you pull them close and you touch them and you applied your hand for comfort and consolation? What about the hand that smites? What about the hand that sheds innocent blood? Your hands tell much about you. In my season of personal revival, 
I know that my hands, what I do with my hands, because I was sick. You see, whenever I got out of the house and I got to drive around and I got to go from, and I saw that corner, I haven't seen that corner in a long time. <laughs> I missed that corner. <laughs> That corner was on the way to the place that I'm going to put my hands to do something for the Lord. It's on the way. And I saw, and I was thankful. I was thankful. And when I got to go out and I got to do something, move some dirt, when I got to clean, when I got to help unstop a toilet, <laughs> I'm thankful. You know why? Because I'm able to put my hand to something. If you're sick, if you're in, if, we only have a season, guys to apply your hand. You only have a season. Don't sleep through it. Don't sleep through it. Utilize the opportunity that you have for it too will pass. And I went and I was so glad that I could do something, that I could put my hands on something and accomplish something for the Lord. You see, it's not just to apply my hand to apply. It's for the glory of God. It's for his glory. <clears throat> All right. Now we're at the real meat of the sermon. Revelation chapter 13. Is everybody with me? Yes. Revelation chapter 13, beginning in verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he, that, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. And he causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That first beast is the Antichrist. The second beast is the false prophet. And the enemy has the picture in the end of what we have in the Old Testament and the New Testament, Aaron, Moses, and Aaron. And then we have the picture of Jesus and John the Baptist. Okay? So we have the picture, ruler and religious leader. Remember, Aaron was a high priest. Then we have Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords. And we had John the Baptist, who's of the priesthood. Okay? And then in the end, there's going to be political leader, Antichrist, and there's going to be false prophet. So we see this picture over and over again, okay? This is the false prophet, the religious leader. He's the second beast. And he doth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast. So he's seeking to glorify the Antichrist, who is a direct connect to Satan himself, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed." And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now then, hand. How many, whenever we went up there to get our COVID test, how many's had a COVID test? Okay. Did they pull any of your brains out whenever they pull? Because <laughs> I'm telling you, that thing went all the way up. <laughs> It bottomed out, and I think I heard him go clang, 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 whenever that, <laughs> clang, <laughs> at least it felt like it. <laughs> I did not know that I had open passageway up that far. <laughs> I got the test, and we got test multiple times. Did you know every time we went in to do that test that we had to fill out forms? Now, how do you fill out a form? You use your hand, don't you? Isn't it amazing that the Lord said, God says he's going to put his name in a place? How do you, how, that, that's called a signature, right? How, how, my wife has a little football. It was signed by this dude y'all might recognize. His name is Colt McCoy. Yep. 
<laughs> okay? And, and, and it was a little bitty football, and he was in high school, or maybe just, I don't, he was really young at the time. And she got, and it, did you know why that thing is sort of important to people that like Colt McCoy or from the, it's because his hand was on that. And the proof of his hand being there was his signature. Okay, so the proof that we were up there getting our test is embedded in the fact that I gave them my signature. My hand was upon that. And we did it over and over again. Right here, this verse says that the enemy is after your hand. The enemy is after your hand. And when he gets your hand, he'll have you forever. Like the unpardonable sin of blaspheming the precious Holy Spirit. Amen. You cannot be forgiven. The Bible says you take that, you're going to be damned. It's over. He wants your forehead and he wants your hand. Why, why does he want your forehead? Because it's your mind. So i got to ask you the question. I'm out of time here. The question is this. Do you have a signature line for the enemy on your mind. Do you have a signature line for the enemy on your hand? Because your hand is doing things it ought not. Your mind is going places it ought not. And all he's got to do when the test arrives is to sign his name. Where is your hand? What are you doing with your hand? What are you doing with your mind? The Lord bought you. You belong to Him. Don't give yourself to the one who creates the disease. Don't do it. Let's pray.